Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to our weekly Sunday School show, Kingdom Lives Matter. I am here with my buddy, Mr. James Ruark. I'm David Rhodes. Uh, if you're watching us on GRTV, on television station, cable television station, thank you. If you're watching us on YouTube, we really appreciate you. I would ask that you subscribe, like the video, maybe comment. We've got a few questions we're going to be asking you. And then also, if you really find that you enjoy this video, please help us share the word of the Lord and copy the link or share it. You can copy it and post it on your Facebook page, send it in Messenger, text, however you want to do it. And that'd be great if you could help us spread the word. Yeah, uh, I, re I really appreciate your comments too. The comments I read on, on YouTube, uh, giving us feedback, saying that really blessed me or you're really off the wall. Uh, regardless, I, I appreciate your comments. Good, good, good. If you're going to say we're off the wall, direct those to James. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I got big shoulders, I can handle it. Yeah, he can handle it. He can handle it. Yeah, he's an old football player right here. Yeah. Anyways, uh, today's lesson is a beautiful lesson. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm wearing this country jacket, this blueberry denim jacket, because Moses reminds me of an old country preacher. Mm. And uh, so I wanted to kind of represent Moses on this lesson. Uh, as you can see, the lesson is taken out of Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 through 22, mm -hmm. out of Union Gospel Press, a prophet like Moses, a prophet like Moses. <clears throat> now, because Moses sees him as, as a prophet and a leader of the children of Israel is nearing the end, God is actually preparing his people to enter into battle, and he warns the people of the satanic spirit that they are about to face. Uh, God lets the people know that there is another prophet coming to lead the people in the form of a general, Joshua, the bold and the strong one. Now, but wait, brothers and sisters, this messianic prophecy is a dual prophecy in which it represents the near future change in leadership. But more importantly, God is foreshadowing the only man, the God man, who can fulfill roles of king, prophet, and priest. You know who he is. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Now, just leading up to this lesson, God lets the people know early in the verses in this chapter that they are uh, possessing the land because of his promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not anything to do with their own righteousness. God reminds the children of Israel how he killed thousands of them because of their own disobedience. I mean, just prior to this lesson, God lets the people know that the priests were to get 10% of all the goods and minister unto the people. Then God makes an immediate transition that begins here in verse 9. Right. Okay, so let's read it. Let's hear the word of the Lord. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Mm -hmm. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. Mm. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Mm. Because of these same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out these nations before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. The nations you dispossess, listen to those who practice sorcery or divination. But as for you, the Lord your God has not permitted you to do so. Mm. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me among you from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. For this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, or we will die. Mm. The Lord said to me, what they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you among their fellow Israelites, and I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods is to be put to death. You may say to yourselves, how can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord? If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. 
that prophet has spoken presumptuously, mm. so do not be alarmed. Right, good, good. James, would you do me a favor? Can you hit 9 and 11 again? 9 through 11, sure. please? When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Mm. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, mm. who practices divination or sorcery, wow. interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, wow. or who is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. Woo! Wow. You know, God warns the people that the indigenous polytheistic Canaanites have some terrible practice or abominations. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you, look, when you think about this word abomination, you're talking about sin. You're talking right. about something that's deplorable, right. uh, that's prohibited. De detestable. Detestable. Right. Something that you definitely <laughs> want to stay away from, right? Yeah. Now, how more deplorable can one get as to sacrifice children by making them walk through fire? Yeah, actually making them pass through fire. They would, uh, the statue of Molech mm -hmm. or, or um, other uh, Canaanite gods actually had were built like this with their arms out. And mm -hmm. they would put children in the arms of that idol and then sacrifice their children in that idol. It's just an awful, horrible Dang. Wicked, evil practice. Golly. Ooh. So you can understand why the Lord wanted to drive those people out from before the Israelites. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, James, this reminds me of last week's lesson uh, when Jesus said not to mess with the little ones. That's right. You know, he said, he said, you remember last week's lesson? He said, you'd be better off to put a millstone right. around your neck and jump into the right. sea right. than to walk around on this earth. Right. I'm going to mess you up. That's right. He will defend them. <laughs> He'll yeah, defend absolutely. them. Absolutely. Amen. You know, brothers and sisters, God has a barrier around righteousness. Okay. You got to look at this. Think of righteousness in a certain part, a certain land. And righteousness fits right into here. And God says, if you step into the forbidden, outside of that area that he puts around us, he's, then you're walking in the sin. Mm. And you're inviting God's wrath. That's right. You know, humanity, I, I thought about this earlier today. Humanity is the only creation that has the option to disobey God. Hmm. Good point. Humanity is the only creation that can maneuver outside of his barriers. I mean, think about it. God put the sun into rotation and then right. it goes around the earth and right. everywhere. You know, God put the moon into rotation. That's the right. moon is not going to alter what God has put in place. Sure. Every other creation is set to a particular order. And we have the liberty, the, uh, the ability to have free will to go as we will, do as we please. To go against our nature. To go against our nature. Yeah. Uh, Brother James, th there is no doubt that there are invisible satanic spiritual powers that are very dangerous and disseminated amongst false prophets. That's right. No yeah. question about it. You know, these false prophets or humanity who represent Satan mm -hmm. were actually able to speak to demons. And I th they mm -hmm. do it today. Mm -hmm. You know, when they're calling on the dead and all that, they speak in, they're speaking to demons that could imitate acquaintances, acquaintances of people. They could imitate right. the ability to call up the dead and receive messages from them that right. may even be true. Right. You it, know? It, they are all uh, satanic practices that go back for thousands of years. When somebody calls the psychic line yeah. and the psychic says, I talked to your dead cousin. And Jonathan. Says, oh, what did he say to me? Like, How did you know uh, that was Jonathan? Yeah, yeah. That, that This is the kind of thing that this passage is talking about. He says, stay away from that. And, and the big problem is that you're seeking a supernatural power that is not God. Yeah. So anytime you're, you're trying to tell the future or seek some sort of knowledge uh, that is not by the Spirit of God, Amen. It, it's from a different spirit. And, right. and so, so their, their uh, powers are way sharper than any man's. And so it's, we have to make sure that we're relying on Jesus, right. that we're relying on God. Because you go in and think it's something is just as uh, uh, haphazard as, oh, we're in New Orleans. Let's go into this little shop and have somebody read our palm. Oh. See, yeah. you say, oh, yeah, we're just on vacation. Let's go have some fun, honey. Come on, come on, let's go. And then they read your palm, and next thing you know, you're in a room full of 20 demons that don't even know it. Right, 
Right. Yeah. Influencing you. Right. Because you're seeking supernatural power that is not from God. And if, if it's not in the name of Jesus, in a way that the Lord uh, gave us in, in yeah. Scripture, as, as an example in Scripture, yeah. then it's, it's a different force. There's a different force at work. Amen. And anytime you trust in that, that different force, you're giving it some sort of authority over your life. Amen. And, and for those who follow Jesus, um, he says, I have given you authority over those things. Don't you give them authority. I've given you authority. Bam. So in Christ, we have authority over all of that. We don't have to be afraid of it. Um, but let's not open up the door to it. Let's keep that door closed. Right. Those nations before you. Mm -hmm. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. The nations you will dispossess, listen to those who practice sorcery or divination. But as for you, the Lord your God has not permitted you to do so. Amen. Amen. That just says what we just said. Right. <laughs> yeah. The Lord had already instructed the children of Israel not to intermingle intermingle with the people of Canaan. Remember that? Uh, because they would be unequally yoked and holiness has nothing in common with unrighteousness. That's Remember right. that? God said, don't make, don't intermix the blood. Keep the bloodline right. pure because Jesus is coming through this line and he didn't want the sin factor to come and mess up his people. Right. Now, brothers and sisters, you got to remember this was going on over 3,000 years ago and darkness was cast out of heaven and roam the earth way before this point, right? Uh, right? The previous list that we just read about is a way is way longer here on the 21st century. There's a lot more things going on. When when they when Moses named that list, that was an exhaustive list. That was probably the most popular things they had to deal with. But now, I mean, you got stores with this stuff going on. Right. You got buildings that you can pay money to go and entertain this stuff. It wasn't, you know, it's it's a big deal now. You got an 800 number you can call. You know, I mean, it's everywhere. An 800 number, you've got books, you've got online websites that teach kids how to put curses on others, or not just kids, anybody. And um, some people start to delve into it quite a bit, get involved in witchcraft. Others think that it's just innocent fun. Uh, but it's not innocent fun, according to this passage. It's something that you need to take seriously and don't open that door to, to Satan's uh, power. Don't do that. Take heed. Take heed. Stay within God's boundaries, right? right? Follow his commands uh, because these, these people are on the devil's team. That's right. God is driving them out so that his people can possess the land. Mm -hmm. Now, what does God do to those folks in this season? Right. What does he do? You don't want to be caught riding the fence, jumping mm -hmm. from one side to the other side. Right. You might get caught on the wrong side of the fence right. when God comes with his wrath. Right. You know, it's my belief that even though alcohol and marijuana are legal in most pe most parts of the land, they can lead to an increased sin life. That's right. Yeah. I mean, all the detestable things uh, they just listed were were legal back then, right? All those things right. Moses listed was legal. Uh, and just like marijuana and alcohol is legal now, but that doesn't right. mean God wants you to just indulge in it. Right. We can't rely on the laws of the country to tell us what is right or wrong before God. Uh, we have to look at God's word. Amen. And, and he tells us to be sober-minded, mm. not, not getting high, not getting drunk. Yeah. Sober. Keep your mind sober. Yes, sir. Your mind is one of the most important um, assets that God has given you. And it's precious and it's yeah. strong and valuable. And he doesn't want you to mess it up by getting high and altering your state of consciousness and killing the brain cells and all the things that happen when you abuse substances. Amen. Amen. That's right. Want me to read verse 15? Yes, sir. All right. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. Now, here is where the dual prophecy comes into place. Mm -hmm. God is speaking both of Joshua, the next ruler of the children of Israel, and Jesus the Christ. He yeah. says he's going to be like me. That's mm -hmm. a personal pronoun. Right. <laughs> he's going to be like me. Now, who is like God? Nobody more like God than Jesus Christ. Uh, it's truly amazing that God is telling Moses, 
to write. This is really amazed me, uh, James, that God is telling Moses to write down that he himself, God, is coming to earth to lead his people in the flesh. Amen. He's like, tell the people I'm coming back. That's right. <laughs> you know, like Moses, Jesus was spared as a baby. That's right. Like Moses, Jesus renounced the royal court. That's true. Like Moses, Jesus reviewed, uh, received and preached divine revelation. Jesus had compassion on his people. Mm -hmm. Jesus makes intercessions for the people, just like Moses did. Jesus spoke to God face to face. At, like Moses, he was the mediator of the covenant. The new and covenant. The yeah. new covenant. That's right. Thank you. And Jesus would become Israel's deliverer. Yes. Amen. Amen. But there's a big difference in Moses and Jesus. That's right. Jesus is the ultimate revealer. Mm -hmm. He's the ultimate revealer of the ultimate prophecy as the Lamb of God to offer human life more abundantly. That's right. Yeah. It's not just about what Jesus taught or the law that he gave, the tablets Moses gave and the revelation there. It's not just about that revelation, but it's the revelation that's in him himself, the yes. person of Jesus. Jesus himself is, is the new covenant. We couldn't say that about Moses. Right. So in other words, you never see a bumper sticker that says, honk if you love Moses. Right? <laughs> you don't see that. Because, no, because uh, oh. nobody worships Moses as God or as the redeemer of the world. But yeah. we believe that Jesus is the redeemer of the world and that he is God, God in the flesh. And that's where Jesus and Moses are different. Yeah, amen, amen. Although I thought I saw one on your bumper that said, honk if you love James. Oh yeah, it could be. <laughs> I didn't get any honks though. So. <laughs> All right, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, so the people will hearken unto Jesus' words because they are the last, final, and authoritative words disseminated by the apostles. Right. Yep. Can you go ahead? Uh, go ahead. You got something else on that? Nope. Go ahead. We'll Let's read go ahead 17. and read 16 and 17. For this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God or see this great fire anymore or we will die. Pretty amazing. Good, good. Now, our Lord requires reverence and obedience. Yes. Uh, James, would you mind reading Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 24 through 28? Yes, sir. And you said, The Lord our God has shown us his glory and his majesty, and we have heard his voice from the fire. Today we have even seen that a person can live even if God speaks with them. But now, why, would sh why should we die? This great fire will consume us, and we will die if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer. For what mortal has ever heard the voice of the living God speaking out of fire as we have and survived? Mm. Go near and listen to all that the Lord our God says. Then tell us whatever the Lord our God tells you. We will listen and obey. Wow. Now imagine that. <laughs> That's pretty amazing right there. Here you got this voice coming out this fire and no man has ever seen this, right? Mm -hmm. so I think Mount Horeb was probably the first time they seen some man, a voice coming out of some fire, That's you right. know. I mean, fire was probably already amazing to him, I imagine. So now you got a voice popping up out of there. Right. Yeah, I'm scared. Yeah. You're talking about <laughs> Almighty God who has, who has created the trillions and trillions of stars and everything that on earth and uh, has always existed before anything. No beginning, no ending. Incredibly holy. Um, and yet he chose to speak to some people here mm. in the middle of a desert. Wow. And of course, it's going to be scary to them. Yeah. Even though God loves them, it's still very scary for the people. Yeah. And, you know, James, as you were speaking, I was thinking about this desert business. I mean, we know there were a million plus people out there, right? Right. So now imagine this voice having to elevate and, and magnify so that the people could hear. Yeah. A million people don't fit in a small 12 by 12 right. room. That's right. And this voice that people heard coming out of fire, I mean, that had to sound like some major thunder voice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That had to be some got something yeah. fantastic. That would explain why they say it sounded like <laughs> it thundered. It sounded yeah. like thunder. One thing that... I'm reminded of when I think about this voice in the fire 
it reminds me that the God who speaks out of fire, he's the one to obey, right? right. When you start to feel a little fleshy, a little tempted, maybe you want to remember this God can speak out of fire. <laughs> and, That's right. and if he wanted to, he could hurl it all up on your house. <laughs> That's right. James, could you read uh, Exodus 20, 19 through 23? Sure. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself, and we will listen. But do not have God speak to us, or we will die. Mm. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you, so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you mm. from sinning. The people remained at a distance, while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. Mm. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites this, You have seen for yourselves that I have spoken to you from heaven. Do not make any gods to be alongside me. Do not make for yourselves gods of silver or gods of gold. Uh, James, the God whose presence commands thunder, he mm. commands lightning, mm. he commands fire, he commands sounds like trumpets and mountain rocks smoking. That's right. <laughs> he's the one to obey. It's awesome. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. He he's makes a whole big mountain start smoking. Right. Jeez. <laughs> and it says in Hebrews 13, our God is a consuming fire. Yeah. He still is. Yeah. God. Even though we have grace, we have the redemption in Christ, it doesn't change the fact that um, God is incredibly holy and, and in a sense, fearsome. And uh, we tremble at his presence. That doesn't change. And I'm, I'm glad for that. I'm glad he's not a wimpy God, a big Santa Claus in the sky, but he's incredibly, inscrutably holy and Sovereign. Amen. That's good. I'm glad for that too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he can fight my battles. That's right. <laughs> God, yeah. he's still causing the elements to speak on his behalf. That's right. Don't think he isn't. Right. Now, we're demonstrating reverence, right? Here's my question. Right. Here's my question. Are we to demonstrate reverence and obedience? Amen. Yes, we are. But now, are we demonstrating reverence and obedience in our own lives? Are Good we question. demonstrating reverence and obedience in our own lives? Oh, Jane, look at my wife on the screen there. Look at me and my wife. Hey. All right. How you doing? Brightened honey? up the screen. Yeah, okay. She makes me look good, doesn't she? That's right. <laughs> okay. That's your better half. Yeah. James, uh, let's go back to the original text, uh, verses 18 and 19, please. Sure. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among the fellow Israelites, and I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. Now, here's my question to the people. Okay. What is a prophet? Okay. What is a prophet? That's a really good question because a lot of people have come up with a lot of different answers nowadays. And yeah. So it's good for us to know. Yeah, it's kind of like a, it seems like it's kind of like a trend now to call yourself a prophet. Yep. You know. And I'm, I'm personally not opposed to that. I don't, I don't know what your stance is on that. Um, but I don't take it lightly and I don't think it's very many people. Yeah. God can use who he wants to relay his message. That's right. And if it's a future message, he can do that too. That's right. He's already proven that. So, you know, we wouldn't be wise to say there aren't no any prophets this day. Right. Uh, he can speak to a talking donkey, right? Thank you. Thank you. He did to ba Balaam in the book of Numbers. Amen. So here's my definition. Mm -hmm. A prophet is one who speaks for God the Father. He's one who mediates on the behalf of stiff-necked people like me and you. Uh, he's one who approaches God on behalf of the people. Uh, he approaches them for their petitions versus their famine. He approaches God uh, for a plea of mercy versus for wrath. Yes. He approaches God for a plea of forgiveness versus destruction. The prophet Jesus' words are everlasting. That's right. Now check this out. The words of the Old Testament, prof Old Testament prophets manifested every time. And God sent wrath when the people did not obey his word or antagonize his That's prophets. Right. Okay, That's one uh, for sure telltale sign. If That's the right. prophet speaks something and it doesn't happen, and it right. doesn't occur, 
<laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, oftentimes the prophets in the Old Testament called God's people back to him, away from their, their backslidden condition, away from their sins, away from the compromises they had with the world over time. And he said, no, come back to God. Come back to a life of, of, of purity and, and love and holiness. Yeah. And, and forsake the ways of the world around you. And prophets do that. That's, that's their role. That's their function. Uh, James, could you go ahead and read verse 20, please? Yes, sir. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, is to be put to death. Whoa. Ooh. God has warned all generations. Yeah. False prophets' penalty is death. People who follow false prophets' penalty is death. And even genuine prophets who disobey God's word and cause people to stumble, their penalty is death. I would say the Lord takes it seriously when someone says, this is the word of the Lord, and it's not the word of the Lord. Yeah, he takes it very, very serious. Uh, let's go on to verses 21 and 22. You may say to yourselves, how can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord? If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is the message the Lord has not spoken. That prophet has spoken presumptuously, so do not be alarmed. Now here, I'm going to come at it backwards on this one. Here is a lame excuse why the scribes, the Sadducees, and the Pharisees had a strong desire to crucify our Lord. Mm -hmm. Because you've got to remember, they thought that he was a false prophet. Even with all the sorcery and satanic powers that were going on, people getting possessed, the religious leaders should have realized that there were no greater miracles and healings than what Jesus had That's done. That's right. Absolutely. You know? And so they, they're coming, they're saying, oh, you got to be a false prophet. Well, we got to follow the rules of the book. We got to crucify you because you're right. not a true prophet. Well, they missed the whole message that Jesus' miracles were not an end to themselves. They were meant to point people to God. Yeah. They were meant to confirm the message he was speaking. Yeah. And over time, uh, people should have seen that the message was him. He, he is the Messiah. He yeah. is that prophet. The word. The, the redemption of the world uh, rests with him. And they, that's what they missed. Yeah. Jesus, he said it best in John 1, 46, James. Mm -hmm. for, we, for had we believed Moses, you would have believed me, yeah. for he wrote of me. That's right. Wow. You know, I heard a 21st century prophet say that if the receiver of a prophetic utterance did not believe that they would receive, then they wouldn't receive. Right. What are your thoughts on that? If they don't believe that they will receive, then they will not receive? Yeah. Well, um, First, it has to be confirmed that this person is speaking genuinely the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Somebody can't come along and say, I'm a prophet, you have to listen to me. Mm -hmm. This is what the Lord warned against. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to see it in the person's life. We need to um, hear it in the message that they're speaking. Mm -hmm. Not just the, the cool you know, words of knowledge where they wouldn't know something and the Lord speaks it to them or the predictions of the future. But what is the message that they're speaking? Yeah. It, it says in the book of Revelation that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of the prophets. Amen. It's the testimony of Jesus. And so somebody who's truly speaking by the spirit of God will point people back to Jesus. Good. And if, and if it's not doing that, then you better not listen to them. Yeah. Uh, if they are doing that, then listen to them. And, and everything, according to 1 Corinthians 14, everything we are supposed to test to make sure that it's the truth. Very good. Yes, sir. I agree 100%. You know, if you come to me and say unconditionally, God told me to tell you, you mm -hmm. know, blah, 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 then his word will not return void. Since God did not command false prophets to speak a word, mm -hmm. the people were to test prophecy, just like you said. That's right. And if his prediction did not come to pass, mm -hmm. uh, number one, the people were to know that he had not spoken in the name of the Lord. Right. Number two, the people would know that he had spoken presumptuously. Right. And number three, not be afraid of him. That's right. And then four, know that the prophet shall die.
If he repents, though, if he admits that he spoke out of turn, um, he, he does have grace. Uh, you know, we, we do live in a dispensation of grace. Yeah. There are times when people are going to miss it. Yeah. Uh, the important thing is that they acknowledge it and th so that they're not proud about it and say, oh, well, I think it was actually supposed to be this or that. No, just admit that you missed it and, and bring it before the Lord and, and uh, make it right before him. Uh, but then, you know, people need to be a little more careful about that person next time. Yeah. Because um, if you do that once, you can do it again. Right. Yeah. You know, there are two main points that I would like. If you're a Sunday school teacher, please make sure you get these two main points to your students. It's two main mm -hmm. takeaways. God expects his followers to live holy. That's it. That's it. God expects us to live holy. Amen. Um, you know, just because, not just, but because he, we have grace and we have mercy and God forgives unlimitedly, that doesn't give us uh, a free license to go out and live and do what we want to do. Right. right. And the other thing is, number two is, God wants us to know that we need him because we are not capable of living holy on our Amen. own. Amen. That's right. Yeah, we need grace. We need His grace every day, His free gift. And holiness comes as uh, an overflow of His holiness. It's not our own. We don't possess it in ourselves. Uh, but it's something that He fills us with, and it grows in us. And the Lord, the Lord knows that. He knows that we're but, we're but flesh, we're but humans. Yeah. And, uh, but he, he grows His holiness in us as we spend time with Him, as we spend time in His Word. Something that grows. Amen. Amen. James, brother, I want to say thank you for coming on to the channel and teaching a lesson with me today. I really appreciate you, man. Likewise. Um, also, please, if you found something here that you like, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, and then if you would, uh, share the link on your social media pages. That would be a great help. I would like to say thank you to our sponsor, New York Fried Chicken, and also a uh, great Oh boy, what are they? Thank you. And also, Great Giant Supermarket. Uh, they're one of our new sponsors. Want to say thank you to uh, the Urban Youth Tech Lab. Mm. Uh, they are here working behind the scenes with us right now. Uh, with Maritza and Junior. Want to say thank you very much to you. And then we're missing a couple of others uh, Kawante and Blessing. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Take care.